Ellen mentioned Dr. Stephen Pavletic, who is here with us tonight. He's currently the head of the Graft versus Host Disease and Autoimmunity Unit in the Experimental Transplantation and Immunology Branch at the National Cancer Institute. Dr. Pavletic would like to extend special recognition to his research colleague, Dr. Georgia Vogelsang, who cannot be here with us this evening. Dr. Pavletic and Dr. Vogelsang co-chaired the National Institute for Health Consensus Project of Criteria for Clinical Trials in Chronic Graft versus Host Disease, and recently collaborated on a comprehensive textbook entitled Chronic Graft versus Host Disease Interdisciplinary Management. Dr. Pavletic. Good evening. Uh, thank you, Patty. And I will proceed with my uh, section of the evening. It's the discussion and uh, presentation on uh, some care challenges that uh, bone marrow transplant survivors are facing, particularly chronic graft versus host disease, and as well as uh, uh, some directions uh, uh, where uh, we may be going in the future. At first, I would like to emphasize that uh, being in the bone marrow transplant field, we have the unique uh, opportunity and situation that each single bone marrow transplant is performed with a curative intent. So it's a very unique uh, position among the spectrum of different cancer therapies uh, that, that we are in. So we do aim for cure. And I'd like to show this a photograph uh, uh, that's been kindly provided to us by Stephen Foreman of City of Hope, uh, who heads one of the major national transplant centers in California, demonstrating uh, one of their uh, survivorship events and uh, vividly uh, uh, inspiring all of us uh, in, in the uh, work that we are doing in uh, uh, pursuing uh, the uh, bone marrow transplant clinical and uh, research work. I was prompted by a few of my colleagues um, for this event tonight just to say a few things about how did I end up in the bone marrow transplantation and in the chronic graft versus host disease. So I'll, this is just one slide on that topic. I started uh, uh, in 1986 uh, by joining a bone marrow transplant program in Zagreb, Croatia. You think frequently of bone marrow transplants being done in that place in those days very early for the bone marrow transplant field and it was at that time was the only active bone marrow transplant program in what used to be Eastern Europe. In 1990 I had the opportunity to uh, get invitation to come to Seattle for the bone marrow transplant fellowship, the, um, uh, the premier and place for the bone marrow transplantation and the coinciding in 1990, as you all know, that Don Thomas received the Nobel Prize for developing bone marrow transplant as a treatment for patients with cancer. So my fascination with the field was complete and uh, I was clearly dedicated and by that time uh, to pursue my academic efforts. Uh, joining in 92 Omaha, Nebraska, it is important to mention that Today we talk about peripheral blood stem cells very easily. In 1992 it was a still deep belief that you can get durable engraftment of the stem cells if you use peripheral blood, that you had to use the right source, that's a bone marrow. And uh, in Nebraska they pioneered uh, in the United States the utilization of peripheral blood stem cells initially for uh, autologous transplants in patients with lymphoma and then around <coughs> joining other centers in the 90s uh, for allogeneic transplantation. It became very clear that those procedures resulted in faster engraftment, shorter hospital stays, uh, they were easy to collect but we observed as well more chronic graft versus host disease as one of the byproducts of using more peripheral blood stem cells for allogeneic transplantation. In 2000, uh, Stephanie Lee spearheaded an ad hoc meeting of uh, investigators to talk what to do about chronic graft versus host disease and perhaps some seeds of the idea of uh, subsequently came as NIH uh, uh, effort were already planted in 2000 and in 2002 I had the opportunity to join the National Cancer Institute uh, and work on chronic graft versus host disease. This is a picture of a patient with a severe chronic graft versus host disease uh, uh, and this patient was uh, uh, severely disabled and in impaired in his uh, 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 mobility. He fortunately responded well to the investigation or treatment on a clinical protocol and uh, 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 remarkably almost completely recovered his ability to function. 
Fortunately, uh, most patients don't have this so, kind of severe forms of chronic graft versus host disease. But I want to emphasize you know, that it's a multi-system disorder uh, affecting a number of organs, primarily eyes, mouth, skin, but many others, and uh, severely affecting function, quality of life, and especially by its chronicity. So some key features of chronic GVHD that's a major cause of morbidity and mortality develops in about half of the survivors after allogeneic transplantation, major cause of patient family concerns. Uh, treatment is chronic and durable and the patients go through many phases of prolonged symptoms that need lots of attention and care. Uh, most of those resolve by about five years after diagnosis, but uh, uh, there's still a certain proportion of patients that still keep uh, suffering from symptoms or needing treatments beyond five years after diagnosis of chronic graft versus host disease. There are no good ways of preventing uh, chronic graft versus host disease. There's lots of efforts in trying to understand and right now early intervention we think is the best strategy, early recognition uh, of the symptoms. Anti-cancer effects are another good feature. Uh, so there's a good aspect of mild chronic GVHD in particular because those patients have best uh, leukemia-free survival. What causes uh, chronic GVHD? So allogeneic transplantation uh, is the transplantation of a new donor immune system to a patient. Uh, and key cells that play a role, key components of the immune system are T cells. I contrasted here the acute graft versus host disease that mainly occurs within the first 100 days. And it's a rapidly moving target with uh, monomorphic symptoms of uh, affecting skin, GI, or uh, liver. And then chronic graft versus host disease that's a really uh, gradually evolving disorder. You do need an allogeneic transplant for developing chronic graft versus host disease. Uh, but it's a gradual uh, uh, development of autoimmunity uh, and disordered maturation of the immune system from the stem cell. So this is why it takes long, longer time uh, to go through that process and through this very polymorphic and chronic picture that ultimately we tend to say that it burns out. But uh, to get to that point of burning out and uh, going through these treatments, it's uh, sometimes too much too long journey uh, that patients have to go through. So why did we start the NIH Chronic GVHD Consensus Project in 2004? Investigators found uh, in the whole field uh, in the situation uh, realizing that uh, diagnosis and staging criteria developed in early 80s were not precise enough for the uh, time and, uh, where we are in. Uh, no existing response criteria for trials, so investigators didn't speak the same language to each other to, uh, trying to interpret those trials. Limited progress in understanding the pathophysiology of chronic chronic GVHD, limited progress in developing new therapies and limited collaboration among centers. Those are all challenges that uh, we are facing in, st in spite of uh, incredible efforts. We all know that frontline treatment for chronic graft versus host disease are steroids and uh, only about half of patients respond to those. This is the list of drugs and medications that uh, we have uh, at our hands currently for the second line treatment of chronic graft versus host disease. It's about 24 agents that I mentioned just on this slide. The first row is those that we more commonly use and less commonly, but just to illustrating that in fact there is no good standard of care, it's a lot of trial and error, and actually we haven't been successful enough in uh, implementing and executing sufficiently uh, good clinical trials to, to give sufficient uh, uh, place any of those uh, into the armamentarium of how do we treat chronic graft versus host disease. And so the challenge remains.